Well, we're very, very nearly there. Um, just finished making the clamp and the bolt and the plate. I've got to source a small G clamp and cut it in half. Uh, and obviously it needs to be fixed to the steel plate. I'm probably going to braise it as I don't have any welding facilities, but I'm sure it will braise fine and it will produce a strong enough joint on here. Um, I pretty much made this exactly the same way Mr. Pete did uh, on his channel, except I opted to go for the um, the way it was done on the drawings that he provides. And that is, I used two pieces here of, uh, and I used aluminium rather than steel, two pieces, and then I uh, put some, I got an old 30 millimeter shim, which was uh, out of an old feeler gauge set, which I've kept because they're really useful as shims. And I broke up some small pieces and then clamped this all together. I drilled the hole for, the, for this, three eighths hole for this first, put a three eighths UNC bolt through, put the, small bits of 30 millimeter shim all the way around it clamped it all together and then i drilled uh this um i think it was 31 64ths and then reamed it half inch um and uh, i just thought that was an easier way of doing it than, than starting off with one bit and trying to cut it in half uh, but um, that's exactly how it tells you to do it on the drawings and i think that's a probably a, a, a good method and it produces putting the shim in produces enough clamp this will clamp down onto this quite nicely. The other thing is I used quarter inch rod for the Tommy bar. <laughs> the only reason I did that was because I happened to have some quarter inch UNC nuts, which I was able to turn down and make the end, end bits. So that, that's the only reason you can use 3 16 so that will work just as well. So yeah, we're very, very nearly there. One, one more operation to go and this thing will be, um, be good to go. Oh, what I did have to do was I did have to skim the bottom part of the clamp very slightly. I take a few thou off of it, 20 thou, something like that, so that when this sits on the um, drill press table, these are these are flush with, with, with the table. But other than that, it was done exactly the way Mr. Pete did it. So uh, we're very nearly there. Well, the float lock vise is now officially finished. Um, I opted for Mr. Pete's method with the clamp. I found I have quite a lot of small G clamps and I had a record two and a half inch one which was made of steel and I chopped the end off and uh, I have actually brazed it on to the to this bottom plate here and no I'm not going to show you the brazing because it's appalling that's my first attempt at brazing and I have to say that um, people like Rob whose channel is Zenudu they make brazing look really easy and it isn't <laughs> so but it's 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 not very pretty but it's strong it's it's taken properly in a few places but not all the way around but I've tested it and it's and it's and it's perfectly rigid and strong and holding well so um, I'm hoping that my brazing will get better <laughs> as I do more of it. But, uh, but no, it's it's all done. Um, and uh, I'm, let's take it over to the Craftsman drill press and put it in place. Well, here it is in situ on the Craftsman drill press. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can... Come in a little bit closer on it so you can see the... And uh, yeah, I mean, it's in the loose configuration, you can just slide this around and put it wherever you want and it's absolutely excellent. Then you just lock this down. Solid as a rock, not going anywhere. Um, it's a, uh, I think these are just an absolutely brilliant vice for the drill press. Um, and it's gonna be, oh, it will probably be my main main uh, main vice on the drill press I think because it's just so so convenient for for locating where you want the work to do the drilling I mean it's just fantastic so um yeah I'm really pleased with it um learned a few things on the way um and I hopefully the little the few videos I've done will show you that you don't you can do it more or less complete without using a milling machine um but um yeah, uh, lovely bit of kit. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Pete for doing the series because it was awesome. Like all of his series on making anything, you've got to watch his channel. I thoroughly recommend it. It's absolutely brilliant. He's a natural born teacher, this man. So thank you, Mr. Pete. 
and um, looking forward to your next series, whatever it happens to be. So there you go, that's it. Part three of the float lock vise, in situ, ready to go to work. Hope you enjoyed the videos. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.